it's me. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Christmas premiere. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're joining us live, welcome. Uh, so before we get into the meat and potatoes of this episode, I thought I would just come in here and uh, check in with you all and do a little face to face because I haven't seen you in a while and uh, and give you a little a little time to collect yourself. So if you need to like, you know, go if you've been do doing this marathon for a while, I've lost my shoe under my chair and it's bothering me. <laughs> um, if you need to go, you know, take a bio break or get some water or more coffee or whatever it is that you need to do, this would be a good time to do it because uh, we're not diamond painting. Not right this second. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a a warm up time and uh, just listen to some music while I uh, settle in with you. So I'm trying not to look at myself. I get distracted. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much, Pippa, for uh, letting, well, inviting creators to come and be a part of this Christmas premiere. If you didn't know, it goes from like midnight Christmas Eve all the way through, or midnight Christmas Day in the earliest time zone all the way to the end to midnight in, uh, I think it's Hawaii. That's where it ends, isn't it? Is it Japan that has the first? Not 100% sure. However, uh, yeah, it's super exciting. And uh, and I love, I love popping in uh, during the the premieres and just saying hello to everybody when I have a chance. And this year, I think I will, for sure. Um, we're having a very low key Christmas, although, uh, yes, my, my family celebrates Christmas and happy holidays to all of you who don't celebrate Christmas, but you celebrate something else. Um, I still w wish you all the warm, loving hugs and um, the, the virtual hugs <laughs> uh, from me to you. And um, we, I'm, in the middle of doing a bunch of baking and trying to see people and, you know, say our uh, happy Christmases before we get to sit down and like just chill. But even then, we're in charge of dinner this year, which that could be a disaster. I am not a good cook. <laughs> So, um, but luckily, luckily, uh, my family, you know, my husband's family is a family of cooks. Um, so I, I'll probably just take dishwashing duty, not really into much else, but, uh, we just recorded what you're about to see. And as you know, James and I really have kind of bonded over, this little series that we came up with because he is always, always talking about conspiracy theories and um, whether that be aliens or, you know, whatever. He's not like obsessed in the kind of way where you feel like you should be worried about him, but he is obsessed in the entertaining way in that he can bring up a lot of different things at a party <laughs> and he has random trivia. So um, yeah, when we coupled that with diamond painting, it became really fun. And I hope that you're enjoying it. If this is your first time ever here, I just introduce myself because I haven't done that in a really long time. My name is Rachel and I go by Rachel Ray on the internet, not like the chef. I know that a lot of you Americans are probably thinking, oh, Rachel Ray. Meh. Yeah, no, my nickname growing up was Ray. So R-A-E. I, I am not related to any of the other Rays. I think there's an Addison Ray and a Kendall Ray. I barely know who those people are. I'm so sorry to disappoint my younger viewers, but no, I'm not, not even slightly. I am an American. Uh, I'm originally from Virginia, but I live in Ireland and I have done so for about seven years, almost eight years. And um, I have a dog and a cat, Luna and Gigi. Uh, they are... Well, my dog is lying on the bed uh, behind me right now, and Gigi is in the living room. On my channel, you'll typically see me diamond painting, cross-stitching, and knitting. I've done crochet, and I've done other really random stuff like, ooh, what else did we do? We did acrylic pouring. 
paint by number. Uh, I like to keep it crafty here. I like to talk about crafts and then I also update everybody on my life. So if you're interested in like, you know, just a chit chat while you're working on something or crafting or cleaning the house, <laughs> um, I do these videos on Saturdays called Whip and Chats and that's, that's what, um, that's where I talk about my life and stuff like that. Um, I do have social media accounts. You probably already know this if you're subscribed to me already, but uh, I have an Instagram that I'm most active on. Um, I have a Twitch account where I stream live. Uh, not not right now because it's Christmas, but um, I stream diamond painting and cross stitching over there as well as some games, which I'm getting Animal Crossing for Christmas. I'm so excited. <laughs> and um, what else? That's pretty much it. Uh, I have really enjoyed, I've been here for three years now and I've really enjoyed, you know, making videos for people to enjoy. And I want to thank you all so much for watching them. Um, even those three, three people who constantly thumbs down my videos. Thank you so much. <laughs> it, it, it shows me that you care. <laughs> you care enough. Um, so if this is your first time, you're more than welcome. Um, I like to think of myself as kind of a safe place for crafters to be. Uh, on my YouTube channel, I keep things a little bit PG-13, but this channel is mainly for adults. And um, I found a lot of kinship with people who are suffering from mental health problems. I myself suffer from depression and anxiety. I have been clinically diagnosed with both acute ones, but um, I share my journey with everybody and try to normalize the fact that we're living through a global panini, okay? Like, I can't say the word because then, you know, YouTube might get a little bit sensitive or whatever, but it's a rough time, right? Mine developed before the panini, but uh, anyway, just to normalize the fact that, you know, we're here. We're here together. We can do this. I've got you. Um, oh, speaking of, if you haven't had water or you haven't taken your medicine, you should do that right now because we got just a few more minutes before we're going to get started. And this is going to be really awkward for me because I'm actually talking to you in the chat right now. <laughs> so uh, watching myself back is always kind of ooh, cringy. But um Yes, I have big plans for next year going forward. Uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm excited for the new year. And it's 2022. Um, even years have been my years. So I am super excited to, uh, to see where the journey leads. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to shut my trap. I'm going to play a little bit of Christmas music. I'm going to chat with you in the live chat. And if you're watching this on the replay, thank you. Thank you for joining me uh, and James. He'll be here in just a second. Um, but until then, please, please, this is your last warning. <laughs> go quick. <laughs> go make yourself a snack. Go grab that water. Uh, for me, I'm going to finish drinking my Monster. Not sponsored. And also, I don't drink this very often, but I need the energy today. I have to people today. I have to be fun. And so... Sugar it is. <laughs> All right, everybody. I will be chatting away there in the live chat and uh, I will, yeah, I will, I will be back with my husband in just a moment.
and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and thank you so much for joining me today as uh, we do a very special Christmas edition of Theory Tuesday, mm -hmm. aka The Weird and Wacky with Mr. Ray. Hi, Mr. Ray. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I know that you all, there, there may be a lot of you that are watching this live. This is a premiere. So this is a pre-recorded video that we're actually doing the day before Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve Eve. Um, and I will be live in the chat. So I'm over there right now. I'm over there. Just say hi. If you're watching this after that, then thank you so much for clicking in and, and joining us today. I hope that you're all having a wonderful holiday season. And uh, without any further ado, we have one hour. So let's do this. Uh, okay. <laughs> are you ready? Are we, are we started? I'm Is so this, ready. Yeah. Are we, are we doing it? Let's do it. Yeah. Um... Oh, wait. Before that, this is the mystery diamond painting, the Christmas edition mystery diamond painting from Diamond Art Club. So if you do not want to be, you know, spoiled, haha, I said it right this time. If you don't want to be spoiled, please uh, don't look at the screen. Don't watch what we're doing. Is that is that why you have the card over there? Yeah, that's why I have the, the, the papers uh, and everything, oh, okay. because I don't want to ruin the surprise. Yeah. But if you want to see progress, then head over to my Instagram and uh, you can see it there. Now, let's get started. <laughs> this is so confetti heavy, y'all. All right, go ahead, James. Tell us what we're doing. What are we um, doing? I, I guess it, it age, like ages and ages and ages ago, mm -hmm. about maybe, gee, it was it back during the summer, I came across this story of an Irish guy. 84 years. Yeah, and it happens at Christmas. And I thought, oh, well, I'll have to save that for Christmas. I can't tell it out of context, you know? Right. And then, but the, but that was just one story. And then, do you remember last week we were talking about the Irish Roswell? Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's by these two Irish, like, UFO investigators, Dermot Butler and Carol Nally. Yes. And I just thought, let's, let's look and see what, what Dermot and Carol have for us, you know, Christmas-wise. Yeah. So I've got two stories from their book. And I've got then the story of uh, my friend from Limerick. <laughs> Let's see what we can fit in today. So we'll see what we can fit in. And the last time when I told the story of the Ross Common thing, it was garbled and, you know, it was hard to, it, it didn't make a lot of sense. So Did I you thought, see the comments? Huh? They said it was fine. Uh, no, 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 I know. But uh, what I'm saying is that I wanted to pull out all the stops this time because it's Christmas and it's a special edition and everything. So... I've done some illustrations. Ooh. I'm trying to contextualize things because what happens is all of these stories take place at Christmas, mm -hmm. but they take place in different years. Okay. Um, but I'm doing them in Christmas chronology. Christmas chronology? Yeah. So like the first one takes place about a week before Christmas. The second one is Christmas Eve. Oh, and then the I third see. one is, is what we call Stephen's Day. And I guess in Britain, they call it Boxing Day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um. So I suppose that's that's what it is. The other interesting thing is, I don't know if I mentioned this the last time, is that like Carol and uh, Dermot, they they don't use anyone's name. Like hmm. like everyone's like a, an assumed name and everything like that, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's pretty like we'll we'll get into it as we go along. Like, but it's but it, for me, it gives them less credibility. But the stories are still a bit wacky, you know? All right. Uh, yeah. So anyway. <clears throat> <clears throat> What happens is I'm going to I'm going to try and contextualize stuff as we go along. OK, you don't have to explain. Just start. OK, let's go. Right. Let's go. So this one, this the first story takes place in Christmas 1981. Mm -hmm. OK. And for context, I started looking up movies and music and events and stuff that happened in 1981. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there are some killer movies from 1981. Really? Yeah. Like The Elephant Man. Oh. Raging Bull, hmm. Clash of the Titans, the original one. That was 81? That was 1981, yeah. Wow. Um, other movies, th this one from Ireland, like Excalibur, that John Borman movie. I love that movie, it's so good. <laughs> um, the Evil Dead, Time Bandits, Escape from New York, Mad Max 2, Road Warrior. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, An American Werewolf in London, Scanners. So many good movies that year. Hmm. Um. Music, also some pretty good music. Give Betty Davis eyes. You know that one? She's got Betty Davis. Do you know that one? No? 
Maybe. Yeah. Endless love. Oh, yeah. Uh, tainted love. <laughs> soft sell. Ooh. The tide is high. Blondie. Yeah. Uh, don't you want me, baby? This is 1981 as well. Don't you want me? Oh. Um, <laughs> Ghost Town by the Specials. Yeah. I love the Specials. Mm. Um, John Lennon's Imagine. Oh, wow. All these, yeah. So classic music, classic things. Also in 1981, for context, Charles and Diana got married. Oh. 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 The first space shuttle mission happened. Oh. And the first DeLorean <laughs> was, was produced was in produced. Northern Ireland. Um, no? I, I think that this might have been the... I think the that this one? might have been the like the prototype model. Oh yeah, you okay. know that kind of way. Okay. okay. Um, first London Marathon, uh, first high speed uh, rail link in Europe between Lyon and Paris. Oh. Um, yeah. So a lot of a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot of change, you know. Yeah. You know, a lot of advanced. Yeah, it's the happening. it's the like you know there's space shuttles, there's futuristic cars with gull wings on them. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, Sandra Day O'Connor becomes the first female justice to the Supreme Court in America. Woo. It's a time of change, you know. High speed rail links you can get between Paris and Lyon like that. Yeah. So it's it's a time of change and it's a time of thing like and then, so our, our story takes place in Dublin. Um, it takes place about a week before Christmas mm -hmm. and involves a guy called Martin Mulvaney. Now, Martin Mulvaney is not his name. Oh. It is an assumed name. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what's happened is Martin is, is walking um, from Dublin out to his home in Finglas. Finglas. In Finglas, yeah. <laughs> and it's 1981. It's a few days before Christmas. It's late at night. He's walking home. And at that time, like Dublin wasn't as built up. Right. And he's kind of walking out, um, you know, between uh, Dublin and, and walking to Finglas Village, essentially, yeah? Okay. And he's out kind of in the hinterland between them. And he's looking at the scar stars and the sky. He was always interested in astronomy. You know, he could pick out, like, the planets and stuff. Oh, there's Jupiter again, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And then he sees this thing in the sky. And um, he's like, wow, that's that's really unusual. Like, it's... Mm. Is that a satellite? No, 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 no. I think that might be a satellite. <laughs> and he's standing there looking at it. And then he goes, oh, well. And he starts to walk away. And the satellite starts to move with him. <gasps> and then he stops and he's looking at it. And he starts walking back the way he came. And it goes back the way he came. Weird. And then that's it. This satellite in the sky starts mimicking his movements. Mm. Over and back, you know? Mm. Yeah. And anyway... He's he's absolutely fascinated. He spends about five or ten minutes doing this. Yeah. And then he just, he goes on his way home, you know? Okay. Because the thing is that, that, uh, hang on that. <laughs> the infamous notes. The infamous notes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so look, anyway, basically, he sees it in the sky, yeah? Yeah. The next day he goes out and he meets his buddy. Mm -hmm. And they're hanging out for a while, you know, a little Christmas catch up and all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're walking down the road and he sees the satellite in the sky again. And he's like, I, I wonder if I was imagining things or am I going crazy or what? So he says to his buddy, he goes, hey, do you see that yoke up there? What do you think that is? And they're looking at it for a while and his buddy goes, is it a satellite or something? And he's like, going, yeah, I think it is a satellite. I think I can control it with my mind, you know? <laughs> so he like takes a few steps to the left. Yeah. And it moves to the left. Then he takes a few steps to the right and it moves to the right. And at this stage now, his friend is starting to get absolutely freaked out, you know. <laughs> um, and he's like, just stop it, man. Stop whatever you're doing. And he's like, I can't stop it. Like, it's just, you know, it's just copying me. It's like mimicking me or something. And he's moving left and right and it's moving left and right. Yeah. Friend gets absolutely freaked out. <gasps> runs. Oh, no. Yeah. He scarpers. <laughs> um. So that's it, like, but, so I have a quote now from this book here. So it's, uh, Mulvaney, despite his exhilaration, was not at all that surprised. He had always felt that there was something out there in the universe. Mm -hmm. And he had always been interested in astronomy, television, books, documentaries, had all strengthened his belief that the Earth is occupied, uh, sorry, that the Earth occupies only a small plot of the huge galactic real estate. <laughs> galactic real estate. Yeah. Like so that. he's uh, so he's 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 kind of playing with this thing, you know. Yeah. And then eventually he's like, "Nah, Steve ran off, not his real name." 
Steve ran <laughs> off. I guess I'm just going to go home, you know? Yeah. So he starts strolling home. And as he's strolling home, he's vaguely aware that the satellite seems to be following him. Mm. You know? Yeah. It's following along behind him the whole way. And um, he gets to his house and... It's radar. He he turns around and he looks up in the sky and sure enough, there's the satellite just hanging in the sky, you know. Mm. Uh, one of the things he mentions as well is that it was really difficult to tell how close or far away it was, you know. Yeah. Um, so then he goes into his house and he puts an old record on the turntable. Um, one of those fine songs we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Tainted Love, I think. maybe. <laughs> um, and he's he's chilling out, you know sitting on the couch, just chilling out. He's at pains as well to point out that he hadn't been drinking or anything like that. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. He's He is at pains. Totally sober. Yeah, he is at, pa- in, at pains to point that out. And he's sitting on the couch on, it, on his own in the house, yeah? And then suddenly at the back door, there's this tall, well, kind of tall blonde uh, guy in a really tight-fitting outfit. And at first he kind of thinks he's a burglar, you know, <laughs> and he's like, and then he realizes what burglar is going around staring, like just calmly standing at doors in tight fitting uniforms. You know, they're usually pretty skittish. Kind burglars. of burglar. I wouldn't. Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, he, so, Hello, sir. <laughs> so, uh, what, blah, blah. yeah, so he, he's on, he's on there anyway and he's looking at the guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then he says, this is a really funny bit. He says, then the guy spoke to me, but with his voice, not telepathically. Oh, And yes. he said, uh, oh, my famous notes. Um, uh, he said, you should come with us. We have show, so much to show you, you know? Yeah. And then... I think this guy needs a voice. Do you, do you want to have a go? No, 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 no. You're should the... I do a voice? Yeah. I'm bad at voices. Like a... You're great at voices. Uh, what does he sound like? Does he sound... I mean, he sounds like a blonde guy with a tight-fitting outfit. <laughs> um, well, you put me on the spot now. Okay, have... never mind. It's no, fine. no, no, no. I'll, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. He goes, uh, Martin, come with us. We have so much to show you. <laughs> okay. And then Martin says, <laughs> Martin says, and I, I really, I actually really like this. Martin says that he he was sorely tempted to go with the um, space brother mm-hmm. and explore the universe, possibly holding hands while they explore the universe, um, and just experience. Don't mind if I do. Experience all there is to experience in in the wide, you know, become a member of the galactic community and basically yeah. have his own Star Trek thing. Yeah, why didn't he? Because he didn't. He just thought that if he did that, it would mess up his life. He had, yeah, he had just started his career, which they don't mention. <laughs> and he didn't want to leave that behind. Like, And the alien said, I understand. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you, you just, you're in a good place with your job right now. And there's a lot of opportunities for you here. <laughs> um, and that's, that's, that's basically it. And the alien, the alien flies off. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. He spent his whole life. Studying the stars, this, thinking about why was, wouldn't he go? I know. I, I it's thought his it was destiny. I thought it was brilliant. And then later on, they say that that the that they have the name of the person attested to in their files, but that they won't publish it in the book and put it in public domain because he's very high up in a high tech industry. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Could be anyone. I mean, all, all of those guys are based in Ireland, like Facebook, Google, all every tech company you can think of is based yep. in Ireland. Like, so he could be he could be in there somewhere. But that's the story. I love the idea of like the alien offering you to show you the expanse of the universe, and you're like, "Oh, I just qualified as an accountant." <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I will show you the secrets of the universe now. Mate. I'm good. <laughs> I'm I'm good. I just got a job as a clerk, and there's a really good there's a really, <laughs> pension man. There's a really good pension if I can just do forty years of it. <laughs> good chances for a promotion as well. Like Ugh. I could be running my whole a whole team of clerks. What was his name again? Um, he they don't give his name. They go they do this thing in the book where they where they italicize something and put quotation marks around it, mm-hmm. and that that means that. 
that it's this is not the person that they've given them an assumed name. Now, I've read about two thirds of this book, and I've yet to come across someone that is actually named in it. Mm. Nobody is named in this book. Mm. It is actually terrible. It's total fact, though. Huh? Total fact. It is a fact. Hard fact. Hard, hard fact. Uh, so that's the that's the story of Martin, Martin Mulvaney. Anyway. Oh, his name is Martin. That's the assumed name that they've given him. All right. Martin Mulvaney. Ah, uh, Martin, Martin, Martin. Martin, Martin, Martin. Huh. <laughs> um. Then, do you want to hear my next story? Yeah, go on. Go on. The next story takes place on Christmas Eve, nineteen forty-five. Mm-hmm. And it takes place in an island off the west coast of Ireland. Okay. Okay. Now, there aren't that many islands off the west coast of Ireland, really. I guess not. Well, there are lots. There's of like, there's the Aran Islands. All right, there are, yeah. There's, <laughs> but there's... I, well, I, sh- I, should, I should have been here. There's a part in the story like where he's waiting for someone to row a boat across. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You're going too fast. Just, just tell the story. Don't skip ahead. Just give us okay. the... Give it, give it as it happens. So for context, anyway, movies from this year are an awful lot of movies that you've never heard of. 45, right? 1945. Okay. But then there are some movies... Are you sure? ...that you may have heard of. The Bells of St. Mary's? Nope. I've heard of it, but I don't know what it's about. Hmm. Um, Brief Encounter, the seminal uh, British movie... I think I've seen that. It's really um, Brief encounter. Um, I used to live in the north of England and one of the stations, uh, train stations that I used to go through was the one that they shot it at. Ooh. Yeah. Um, Gaslight, based Hmm. on the play where the now very popular term gaslighting comes from. Hmm. That came out in 1945. Tarzan and the Amazons. Ooh. My favourite Tarzan. Dick Tracy. Yep. And this one I put in with exclamation marks because I just really like the title. Incendiary Blonde. Incendiary Blonde. Incendiary Blonde. And I put I put two two quotation marks beside it. And it's actually stars um, a lady called Betty Hutton. Hmm. Yeah. Um so anyway. You, <laughs> <laughs> because Betty is going to come up again. Okay, okay. Because okay. Betty, because I got I got fascinated. I was like, fuck, like incendiary blonde. This is amazing. Like Betty Hutton, and then I googled Betty, and then I was off down a rabbit hole on Betty Hutton. Like you know, <laughs> and check it out. Music from that year. Um, I've never really heard of any of these. Okay. Um, did you ever get the feeling in the moonlight by Perry Como? Oh, yes, I know that. Do you that? Yeah. Dream by Frank Sinatra. Yep. Uh, Gotta Be This or That by Benny Goodman. Mm, I don't know. Can't Can't Begin to Tell You by Bing Crosby. Yep. Do you know that one? Yep. Do you know a song called Doctor, Lawyer, Indian Chief? Ooh, actually, I think I do. Uh, these all sound like songs I've definitely I've definitely heard most of those because I grew up with my grandmother <laughs> uh, yeah Dr. Lawyer Indian Chief is by Betty Hutton <gasps> oh mm-hmm. huh do you know what other song Betty Hutton uh, recorded a few years later what she recorded a song called Oh So Quiet which is a song that Bjork does the cover of you know it's so, so quiet. Do you know that, you know that song? <laughs> no. It's a, it's a, Bjork does a cover of it. I didn't even realize it was a cover. It's, a, it's a class song, though. Like. Huh. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, Betty Hutton, history will show that how influential she is. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, so that's, that's the crack anyway. So this, what happens here is that this guy, and strangely enough, he he grew up um, in a rural area, you know, mm-hmm. and some of his family lived on an island. Just it must have been just off the coast because they're rowing over and back between the island. Mm-hmm. And some of his family lived on the mainland. Now, personally, I like to think that this story took place in Valencia, <laughs> because you can, because it's only you that's can, an island very close to us. It's very close to us. It's very close to the coast, 
Um, I'm I'm half Valencia myself, um, so I like to think that it happened there. You know. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that that's what it happened. <laughs> okay. So he so this guy and they don't give him a name. They just say that he refused to give his name, and then hilariously that he told his story to um, one of the UFO investigators. Yeah. And that UFO investigator is called Larry <laughs> Larry Omani. <laughs> But that's also an assumed name. That's not actually the name of the investigator. They have him in italics with the things around right. it. They okay. don't even, like, their investigators won't even stand up and say, yeah, I'm an <laughs> investigator. They're scared, man. <laughs> they're they've, scared. they've been rattled. Like, the Irish government is seriously dangerous. Yeah. Um, do, you know, <laughs> do you know what else? Like, I tried to look up stuff that happened in, um, in 1945. Mm -hmm. And guess what? what? It is all World War II related. No way. Yeah. So I'm going to put in stuff, the end of World War II. And it's all the stuff that happens with the end of World War II, you know? Uh-huh. Um, the, you know, like the partitioning of Germany and et cetera, et cetera, you know? Mm -hmm. And all of the other very, very bad stuff that's not very Christmassy. But I will <laughs> tell you that after much Googling, I discovered that Earl W. Tupper. Uh, Tupper of Tupperware. Indeed, released, <gasps> released his famous Tupperware containers in 1945. Way! Hot on the market. Way. Yeah. So that's, so that's basically what happened in 1945. The war ended. <laughs> Tupperware. <and> Tupperware. <laughs> that's, that's what the world needed after that. Yeah. Food saving. So this, this, Keep going. Okay. the story with this is that, um, oh my God, I forgot that. What'd you forget? I'm so terrible at this. I had <laughs> I had made photos. I had made I had made some photos for each one of these because I have a photo for the last one. Oh. Yeah. Um We're putting in photos? Yeah, I think we are. Oh my gosh. But I'm after going past the bit for where, where I was supposed to put the photo in the last one. Do you want to see my mock up of, of the stuff from Dublin? Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on from the left. <laughs> So that's, it's 1981. That's, that's, that's Martin Bovani. And you can see he's, he's just walking into Fingless Village. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's good there. Yeah. You're so talented. Oh, uh, well, you know. <clears throat> yeah. I Anybody am. needs some, uh, is that Photoshop? I actually can't afford Photoshop. So I, <laughs> I, so I use GIMP. I think it would, I think it looks like Photoshop. Uh, thanks, baby. You're welcome. It's 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 definitely it's as good as Photoshop. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so this so. so this story takes place. It's Christmas Eve, right? Yeah. And he's been in to visit family, and he's about maybe twelve. And he's gone home. He's on his way home, and so basically he went down, and do you know they've got a rowing boat, yeah. Yep. So a lot of people get in the rowing boat and they row over, and he's waiting there for them to return so that he can get a, a lift. like a ferry. Like a ferry, yeah. But they're rowing between the island and the mainland. Yeah? Yep. And he um, he's standing there, and while he's there, he sees this light in the sky. And the light starts moving around, um, kind of haphazardly, you know? Yep. And it comes down and it swoops over the water. Hmm. And he's like, this is so unusual. And then it starts to get closer and closer to the shore. Mm -hmm. And then he realises... Oh my God, it's, it's not very far away. It's small, you know? Hmm. And it appears to be about five or six feet above the water. And it's just tracking in towards him. Hmm. So he gets a little freaked out and he gets behind a, a, a rock, you know, on the beach. Yeah. And the, the thing comes in and it's maybe about um, like 10 feet across, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of slightly ovally kind of shaped. And it just floats in over the beach and then it lands on the, um, you know, area between the beach and the land. Do you know, kind of where it's grass, but there's still sand on it. You know what I mean? Uh, dunes? Not really dunes, but yeah, I guess. That kind of thing. Yeah, dunes. It lands there, yeah. yeah. And then out get these um, two creatures. <gasps> yeah. So these two creatures come out and they're Space wearing these. Brothers. They're they're smaller than like he was like going, God, they're really weird looking humans. Like, look at big heads on them and small bodies, you know? Yeah. And uh, they get out and they start walking around the beach and the and the the surrounding fields. Mm -hmm. 
and they they they're taking samples of things hmm. you know hmm. and they start so he's behind the rock and he's looking out and they're like walking down the beach and snipping some seaweed and putting it in a baggie or a jar you know <laughs> And then they pick up a rock and they put that in a bag. This is where we pick up the good stuff, lads. It's like they're collecting samples, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, they're collecting samples. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, right, one of the aliens just looks right over at the rock where Spots he him. is. Yeah. And he's standing there, staring at the rock, the alien, and he's, he's afraid to peek out. And every time he peeks out, the alien is still staring. And then the third time he peeks out, the alien has just gone about its business, you know? But every once in a while, it look, looks over at the rock. And so he thinks that, that they basically knew he was there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I've actually done um, a little illustration of that as well, if you'd like to see. <laughs> That's my artist's impression of it. <laughs> it's my artist's impression. Wait, 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 wait. Is that your one? That's Betty Hutton. <laughs> alien <laughs> i couldn't find an alien so i thought it would be good to get betty uh to do it like right? so i think oh, she no. does a great job huh? it's a really good job yeah i mean i wouldn't mind uh if i could see why he stood there for so long you can see they're both surprised well he's he's more like hey how thanks how thanks how's it going <laughs> um so that's so that's that's the crack and the aliens go around and then after a while they get back in their spaceship yeah and um, off they go. Um, and then the people come from the from the thing and they get in the rowing boat. Now, that happened in 1945, right? Yeah. This unnamed man told Larry, the assumed name for the investigator, that um, he told him this story in 1976. Mm -hmm. So he waited like, what is that? Is it 20 or 30 years? 40, 50, 60... So he waited 30 years to tell anyone this story, you know? Mm -hmm. And they said that they had to keep um, his name um, out of the official record because he's very high up in an industrial, a high-tech industrial job <gasps> in an executive position. Oh. Yeah. So a lot of these people, you know, they could lose credibility or whatever if they're... They could have gone with Space yeah. Brothers, but then they just decided to, you know... Well, you know, his career was just starting out like he was... <laughs> Um, accountancy <laughs> accountancy yeah <laughs> so that's um i mean that's 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 pretty much the story there well i i, <laughs> I was attracted to it because when it said that he was waiting for a boat i was like oh my god that could have been valencia i mean valencia could have been like cape clear uh clear island kind of thing mm -hmm. There's a there's a limited number of islands that it could have been. Do you know what I mean? Because not because you can't row to a lot of them. Like you're not going to be no, you can't row for someone to row out to the Aran. You, know you can I mean? row out to, to Valencia. You can definitely. It's really easy. Yeah, you can't row to Aran. I mean, you, well, you could. Can, of course, people do it all the time, but it but it would take forever. Forever. It's going to be like hours of people. But anyway, that is um, the crack with that. Now, the last one I wanted to talk to you about, mm -hmm. and this is really the one that I picked originally um, is the story of Jury Battles. Oh, yes, Jury Battles. Yeah. Um, have a, a, I, I mean, I know I told you before excitedly about that I discovered Jury Battles. Yes, and you did. Yeah, so I suppose we better <laughs> just tell the story of Jury Battles. Go on. Two seconds there now. Let's consult the notes first. I No, I, do you know, never mind. So it's it's two thousand and one, yeah. Uh huh. Um, what's come out? Uh, Gosford Park, uh, Jurassic Park three. Oh. Yeah, I feel like we turn. I feel like we, do, we, you know, we used to be better at these things, you know. Yeah, it's not quite the same, is it? No, it's not. Like I mean, like when you look at nineteen eighty one, like the the amount of like crazy original stuff that was coming out mm -hmm. you know a beautiful mind yeah um vanilla sky mm -hmm. um not another teen movie no that really is a classic <laughs> um you know I, I don't know i feel like i feel like we lost our way or something hmm. i mean now if you look at it now everything for the last 15 years would just basically be avenger movies do you know what i mean yep <laughs> um in terms of movies or in terms of songs um, get your freak on. 
Get your freak on. Lady, Get your freak on. Lady, lady Marmalade. Ooh. <laughs> um, what else? <laughs> Fallen, Elisa Keys. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Drops of Jupiter. Oh, good song. Oh, yeah. 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 Is that by... Um, Train, it says here. Train? Yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know. Let me blow your mind at uh, Eve oh. and Gwen Stefani. Very song. good, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dido, thank you. <gasps> yeah. I haven't heard that in ages. And these, I'm, hang on now. You're talking about my, my young years now. I've aged myself. Very good, very good music growing up. Yeah. Um, I must say. Okay, well, I, I don't. Really, let's 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 not talk about what happened in two thousand and one. We all know. Yeah. Let's let's assume some good stuff happened. <laughs> some. Well, I started high school. <laughs> in two thousand and one, really? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> um. <clears throat> we have an age difference. It's fine. So it's it's a it, this this one. The story actually takes place on Christmas Eve, but it's a few days later is really when it begins, you know? Okay. So Jerry's sitting at home and he's having a cup of tea and it's, it's maybe the 28th of December. A cup of tea. He's having a nice cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And he gets a phone call from a friend of his who's, um, how would you call it? Who, who's a, a contract worker at the local regional hospital, you know? Okay. Let's call him Steve. Steve, another Steve? They're always Steve's, to be honest with you. Uh, so they get, so D Steve, he gets a call from his friend, yeah? Steve. And he answers the phone, and his friend is like, Jerry, do you have a blue kind of anorak? And he goes, yeah, I've been missing that, actually. He goes, right, Wait, well, wait, wait, what's, a, what's an anorak? It's like, a, it's a jacket. Oh. You know, like a, a, war a warm, like a padded jacket, an anorak. Anyway... <laughs> He says, do you have a, do you have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I, I have actually been missing it since uh, Stephen's night. I, I don't know what happened, like. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, you're not going to believe this. We found it on the roof of the hospital. Huh. And he goes, like, I have it right here. There was a, a letter in the pocket, like a Christmas card with your name on it. Hmm. And he goes, that is so weird, man. I, just, I was walking home and I could, and then it all comes flooding <gasps> back. Now, Jerry was on his way home from the Seven Sisters pub in Kildimo in, in Limerick, yeah? Yeah. Now, part of the reason that this story grabbed me was that I ended up in Kildimo one time. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I was, like, Jerry actually lives in a place called Palaskinnery. And I was up by Palaskinnery. And what a name. <laughs> I was trying to find, um, I was trying to find the bypass the ring road, I guess, around it. Mm -hmm. And somehow I took a wrong turn and I ended up in this town and all of the radio stations that I had on my car wouldn't work. And the only radio station that would work is Spirit FM. Oh, dear. Um, which is a Limerick-based uh, uh, Christian pop music channel. Yeah. Um, and I'm driving around Kildimo getting serious kind of... Wes Craven vibes off the whole place, like. Huh. And um, it's a teeny, teeny, tiny village now. You know, it's one street. It's like a, it's a, a, a small shop, like a store and news agents, you know. Mm -hmm. It's two pubs and a, and a church and a few houses. That's what Kildimo is. Wow. So he's, he's walking home from the pub around about um, 8 p.m., yeah? Yeah. Now, he's, he's at pains to mention that he had only had two drinks. This was night. Stephen's night, the this night after Christmas. The night after Christmas on Stephen's night, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah I Okay. And he said, uh, he's walking home, and he said, I remember then, it was a clear, dry night. It was really crisp and frosty, just beautiful. You could have read a book by the light off the night sky. But I wasn't drawn to the light of the stars or the moon, but by a bright, surgical, white light coming from the end of the Boreen. Uh, Boreen, by the way, is a small road for anyone outside of Ireland. So he's seen this small surgical light. He remembers seeing it down the end of the Boreen, yeah? Yeah. And he said like that, he's kind of walking down the road and th there's the light at the end of it and it seems to be getting stronger, you know? Yeah. Um. And he, he, do, he doesn't know what to do, so he kind of stops, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then, boom, 
he's gone and he's on board a ship. What? Yeah. And he said he's sitting, he, he's standing there in this like metal kind of surgical feeling space, you know, wide open circular space. And he said there's about 40 other people in there. Oh my. And he's looking around at them. They're all just, he said like it's every uh, size and type of person is in there, you know. Mm hmm. Um, he said they looked like they'd come from all over the world. There was people in different types of dress, you know. Mm -hmm. But they're all just staring ahead like they're catatonic. Hmm. And he's looking around. And he said he remembers that he was staring at this guy who he said reminded him a little bit of, of Columbo. Because he was wearing the big, you know, the Columbo jacket. You know, like the trench coat. Oh, yeah. And he looked all scruffy and stuff. And he had like on a, a business suit with a tie. He said he looked a bit like Columbo, but he wasn't Columbo. <laughs> Great quote, like, um, and then suddenly he hears this voice in his head go, "You're not afraid like the other ones, and you're conscious." And he said, "Yeah, should I be afraid?" And they're like, "No, but usually the humans are afraid, you know." Humans. The humans are afraid. <laughs> Hang on up. Yeah. So, and he the, all the time he said like. They're speaking to him telepathically in his brain, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, the, so the, the aliens asked him, um, okay, well, seeing as you're awake and everything, is there anywhere you'd like to see? And because it was Christmas, do you know what he said? The North Pole. You're damn right he did. <laughs> and he said, just like that, the ship just took off, you know? Yeah. And he said like that, it, that, do you know in the big circular space? The walls went transparent and it was almost like you were driving at top speed into a snowstorm. Out of all Just the places. <laughs> like that, yeah? Yeah. And um, he said, he said, I remember thinking the whole time, tis like Star Trek, warp speed, Mr. Sulu or something. Like driving <laughs> through a snowstorm at 500 miles an hour, yeah? Now, the aliens take him to the North Pole, yeah? And they they have a pretty good time at the North Pole, okay? Okay. But then the aliens come in and they they sit him down, and they oh. say, "Jory, we gotta have a talk." <laughs> you're you're not terrified of us. We seem to have developed a very nice rapport, and you need to go and bring our message from the Space Brothers to the people of Earth. Okay. We're on very thin ice. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. There's not enough love and unity and respect in the world, Rachel. No, there isn't. Yeah. They're very, very concerned about both nuclear power and climate change. But they said there will be other issues. Ooh. 850 years from now, Rachel, <gasps> a giant asteroid will come barreling towards the Earth. Oh, my goodness. It'll be coming from the 35th quadrant of the universe. Very specific. Yeah. And it could hurt us, yeah? Okay. But they said, before that happens, mm -hmm. we need to develop a, a unity in mankind and realize that we are all brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And we need to come together as a human race rather than this fracturous, different nationalities and credos, you know? Mm -hmm. But that will take a lot of time, possibly hundreds of years. Yeah? Yeah. Hang on now getting too far in this story. No, I'm trying to see. I have some quotes from Jerry here now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, here it is. He said that they're, that, that the aliens are 400, or sorry, are 4 million light years more advanced than us in technology. And they've been observing us for millennia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they said that, that what we've excelled at as a, as a race of, um, as a, a species, you know, mm -hmm. is global warfare and lying to each other. <laughs> and we must stop both of those immediately. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, he told me that everyone in our government has been lying to us from day one and not to trust them. He also warned us not to trust the banks as they've also been lying to us <laughs> and have a hidden agenda. Yeah? Yeah. He was also forewarned of an impending global crisis. And he was told that if we do not change our ways, we'll go the way of the dinosaurs. <gasps> yeah? Yeah. Um... He also said that basically you could boil down the message that the aliens gave him to, to, what am I trying to, 
<laughs> uh, what am I trying to say? What is Jory trying to say? He said, I suppose you could say they told us that we must use the force. We must be one with the force and we must harness the force. <laughs> I can't look at you. <laughs> uh, what else did they... Yeah, so that's that's what that's basically the message. The, do you know, like, the thing Sounds about Sounds very is, similar to... Uh... To the other stories but we, this is this is always the, like when you look into the, it this is always the message that the space brothers have for us you know oh yeah they're concerned about whatever it is we're concerned Use the about the force luke no he did make a star trek reference earlier as well mm -hmm. um i mean that's it he he believes that the aliens use dark matter or dark energy mm -hmm. um to to power their vessels and stuff like that and he thinks that they may be even using that energy to slip in and out of dimensions. When did scientists find the dark energy thing? Uh, when did scientists find dark energy? Do you remember when, I remember when they made an announcement and they were saying dark matter and that there was dark energy as well. Yeah, they, they do claim there's dark energy there. Um, I wonder. I just wonder if he maybe he heard that, or if he uh, I mean, if he was told that before it was announced. I mean, I'm no I'm no physicist, like, but I mean, it's the it, it, it's not a new thing, you know. No, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying I I don't know. If... It's just the the thing the thing about that like dark excited. matter and dark energy, and I must stress that I'm not a physicist <laughs> and have only the knowledge that someone that read one or two articles about it would have had. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like I haven't studied it or anything. I don't I don't even believe I would be capable of it. But like they've been looking for this dark energy or dark matter for years down in mines in Wales and South Africa and you know the deepest mines in the world using I don't know big tanks of heavy water or whatever they use, you know? Mm -hmm. And they have never found anything. Not a pebble. <laughs> Do you know? Nothing. No dark matter, like. Pink. Um, like, just, uh, they went looking for gravitational waves and they found those pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, relatively, like. And they went looking for other stuff, too. Then, like, I mean, they've, they've recently done that Higgs boson and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, these are all also theoretical things that were easy to find you know yeah whereas this dark matter like why is it so difficult to find again i'm probably because it's very dark i'm probably wrong about all this but they're like estimating that it's over 90 percent of the matter in the universe you know what i mean yeah like that's crazy um but what what am i going to say yeah so that's so that's the story of jury do you want to see jury as well just for the because the reason I had to make the other two photos is because I had a photo of Jory. Oh, you didn't make this photo? No, no, this is a this is a genuine photo. Do you see the other uh, ones? James. I'll have to. I'll point out as well that the other ones were had to be faked because those people will not put their names to their experiences, <laughs> whereas Jory is not afraid to put his name to the experience. Right. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> What's with the? Is that the eye, is it? I think that's the eye, but he does a load of these paintings. Like, he, the outside of his ho house is all painted with, like, different celestial bodies and stuff like that as well, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. Yeah. I love I love his name as well. I, I always, like, I didn't even realise that Battles was a real surname. <laughs> because there was, like, an Irish... Um, Hardcore I think band. I, I know there's at least one subscriber of mine that has the surname Battles. It's such a cool name, like. I assumed it was a made-up surname because there was this Irish band called Curb Dog, you know? And wow. they, they were like a, like a hardcore band, you know? Yeah. And the lead singer was called Cormac Battles. Mm -hmm. And I assumed because he's in a hardcore band that that was an, a made-up name, you know? Hmm. My name's Battles, you know? But it turns out it's his no, real it's, name. It's, it's actually real. his real name, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, that's the, that's, that's the story of, um, of, uh, Jury Battles. Well, thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. that and the other stories. No problem. No uh, problem. very enjoyable. Always enjoyable. And thank you for making those pictures. Because <laughs> it really does illustrate the, uh... <laughs> I really have to get better. I really the goings on inside of your mind. I have to get better at. I have to get better at it though. Like I, I mean, I couldn't believe I, uh, I'd forgotten to put. 
Um, the bit on it, like the bit. I suppose I should I could give up my job and 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 do this full time, like. Okay, if you want, <laughs> if you want James to quit his job. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> um. Yeah, so that's that's it. Like, it, but it was it was interesting reading it. But like, I'll be honest. Like, I'm just I'm really disappointed with with Dermot and Carol's book because I thought they'd name names. You know, like one of their books is called that I didn't get because it didn't seem as much fun as as much fun as this book. You know? mm-hmm. This book is. Um, What's it actually called? Hang on a second. Do 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 Conspiracy of Silence. Yeah, by Dermot Butler and Carl Nally. Um, and like, the hilarious thing about it is, it's called Conspiracy of Silence, and then it has something like, you know, the the secret cover-up in Ireland. But they don't name any names, <laughs> in the book, like uh, everybody in the book. Their own, That's because it's super secret. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> their own investigator has an assumed name. <laughs> everybody has an assumed name, like... <laughs> Totally real. <laughs> Total um, facts. All facts. Yeah. Well, I think that's all we have time for. Is there anything that you'd like to say to the people watching this on Christmas Eve? Um, just, I, I suppose I would be like, it would be a call for peace and unity and togetherness, you know? Yeah, listen to your space brothers. Yeah, listen to the space brothers. And, and you know, look to your left, look to your right, look all around you. Everywhere you look in the world. Are, are your brothers and sisters. Come you know? together. Fellow people. Right now. Um, and we, we can do me. this, you know, with togetherness. We can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Toge- togetherness. Nah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and for uh, spending your precious time with us. We, as always, we uh, we appreciate that, and we look forward to hearing your comments and chit chatting with you. So, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Peppa, for inviting me to pr- pr- t- partake, take part in the Christmas premieres. And uh, without further ado, we're gonna go over to the next creator and pass the pen, so to speak. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> we will see you all soon. Have a happy holiday and take care. Bye, everybody! Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.